Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. We are back in the house of the Lord. And the topic of the sermon is principles for success. Principles for success. And we're going to talk about principles for success because it's so important. It was, I was asked about, uh, could I give a message on principles, I mean, uh, for, on success. And when you think about it, that is a very good message to bring. Because everyone, who says, I want to be a failure? Just let me be a failure. Nobody really truly in their right mind wants to be a failure. Right? When you set out to do something, you don't set out to fail. If you're going out for the basketball team or the football team, you don't say, I'm going to go out there because I'm going to be the biggest failure out there on the field or on the basketball court. You go out there because you want to achieve, achieve some level of success. You don't go to college and say, I'm going to go to college and I want to go in here and I want to flunk out. That's not what you do. So where we are talking about principles for success, because that's something that we all want. We want to succeed. We want to do well. But I think some people, they go about trying to reach success in the wrong way sometimes. I truly do believe that. I think that people, they'll do whatever, some people will do whatever they can for success. They'll lie still, even kill, backbite, betray each other to climb a little bit higher on that ladder of success. But see, God... We don't have to compromise who we are to be successful. See, the Lord doesn't have us have to compromise ourselves to be successful. We don't have to uh, lose our godliness to be successful. We don't have to go to jail to be successful. We don't have to do anything criminally in order for us to be successful. See, that's not the way it is in the Lord. We can do it his way and be successful and, and be well at it and be better for it. We truly can. And um, it's amazing whenever I was studying uh, for this sermon. It's amazing. Some of these scriptures, obviously, you do know. And then some of them, I, I read the one scripture, and I read this scripture different times. But I have gotten, God had given me something different with it. And it's amazing. And I'm going to share that with you because I want to, I believe that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to share that with you. And so I'm going to share that with you. But there's different things that I notice about success. See, a lot of times when people go after being successful, what do they do? They try to, they, they go ahead and it, it, it becomes almost a selfish effort, doesn't it? It almost becomes a very selfish effort. It's about what I can do for me, 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 me. But when I was studying for this, I realized that that's not what it was about. Whenever you want the Lord to bless you, it is not about what you can do for you, 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 you. Get this, believe it or not. When you go after doing it the right way and you want to bless others. See, you, people, when you say, I want to be a help to others, I want to bless others. I want to be, I want the Lord to use me. Lord, use me. And when you put yourself in that kind of mindset, you don't even have to ask for things. And he's going to, he'll give it to you. He will give it to you. But see, sometimes when there's something like we're asking for things, it's just about elevating us so I can live a little bit more comfortably, so I can be a little bit more happier. It seemed like that maybe that, that's not the way that he wants it to be for. It's not just one person succeeds and everybody else fails. It's about what we can do for everyone. That's why he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. See, when you begin to dig in the word of God, you realize that it really comes full circle. It links together. Love thy neighbor as I love thyself. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It, it comes back to it comes in full circle so it's never is about us just doing for ourselves and saying well you know I'm just going to just go after mines that's all I'm about is just going after mines 
That's not what it's about. If you want the Lord's blessing, and that's the best blessing you can get. You can go out here and try to ignore the Lord and go out here and try to get blessings, but you're going to find some area in your life is not going to be successful. See, you don't have to just look at success just being money-wise. Certainly, you can look at success as far as being financially, financially successful financially. Certainly, you can look at it that way. But if you just look at, if that's the only way that you measure success, you're missing out on quite a bit of success. So what I'm, what I'm going to tell you is, so even people who go out there to try to get success financially, and they go out there the wrong way, and they make it about them, about them, about them, and about them, there's other areas in their life that are very unsuccessful. Very unsuccessful. Man, they, they're, they're in a horrible marriage. Or their health is failing them badly. To where it's like, what does it matter as far as how, much, how financially they are? Their health is failing them. So it's about, it's about how you measure success. And I think that when, when, you go about, when you go about doing it the Lord's way, you're going to have success. And you're going to have it in a tremendous way. So remember, like people, they go after it and they try to, they go after success and, it's a, and they make it all about them. But that's not the way the Lord had meant it to be. The Lord didn't mean it to be that way. And we're going to point that out in scripture when we go to. And, and whenever they make it about them, they forget him. They forget God. And you'll find out in, that, in the scriptures, that's another thing that we're not supposed to do. Is go about it and forget God. See, God has to be the very, he, he has to be our focal point. He has to be the focal point. And when he's our focal point, he said, that's when he can bless you. That's when he will show you his blessing. But then when you go against his word, that's when he brings his, his punishment. And so whenever I, like studying this, you see a pattern. There's a pattern. And you're going to recognize it from the different scriptures that I read. There is a pattern for success. And it starts off just by obeying his word, just being obedient. It starts off by just being obedient to his word, being obedient to him. Then, then uh, another, uh, uh, another point that, uh, that I've noticed for preparing for this sermon is that when you, uh, so when you make it about him, when you make it about God, then when you make it about others, and then whenever, you, whenever he sees how well you handle things that you already have. When he sees that, okay, they're asking me for a new house, but how are they dealing with the house that I've already given them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How are they dealing with the stuff that i already given them? How are they dealing with, our, with the resources that I already had given them? Or are they abusing it? Or are they saying, you know, or are they not even considering it, just looking, saying, hey, I want more. I want this and that and the other. I'll let this run down. I'll let this burn down. I'll let this decay. I'll let this rot. But please, I'm looking for the next, the next car, the next house, the next whatever. How are you dealing with the resources that he's already given you? So them are the them are key points that I've noticed whenever I was actually studying for this. Whenever I was preparing for this sermon, them were key points right there. What are you doing with what he already given you? So let's go ahead and go straight to the scriptures because we got quite a bit actually. So we're going to go actually straight into the scriptures, and uh, and let's see what uh, they actually uh, point out. So we're going to turn to Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, verse thirteen, and it reads, "And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath." But there is a condition. If thou will hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. See, it's not about, again, how, much, how hard you study. It's not about how hard you work necessarily. Yes, he wants you to work hard. Yes, he does want you to study. But, if you, but it's about 
making him the foundation in the center of your of your attention. It's about making him the focal point in your life, letting him be the apple of your eye. It's about letting him be the center point of you. That's what it comes down to. Now, think about it. I've always pretty much linked our Heavenly Father to natural dads. Right? Because even the worst are our, our Father which are in heaven. And I look at it like that. Just think about when you please your natural parents, your mom or your dad, don't they want to bless you? Don't they want to give you? I was thinking about when my sons were helping, helping me uh, uh, do some concrete work and I was talking about how they were there and how they were helping me and how I had at, how I was I wanted to show them and how I let them pick something out of our treasure box here at church when you're when you do things right with your natural parents they even want to bless you but go ahead and cut up do they have blessings then no they have punishments and that's the same way it's supposed to be with God. Do the right, do right by God. Do right by him. He'll bless you. Just do right. It starts right there. This is the foundation of success right here. Whether if you're looking for success for us financially, whether if you're looking for sex, uh, success um, healthy uh, for us health-wise, whether if you're looking for success for us uh, in relationships, it starts right here, making him the center, making him the center. So we got to put our focus and, and our emphasis on the Lord. And, it, and if we read on and go to the next scripture, we go to Psalms 37 and 4. We used to quote this almost all the time here, right? But it reads, delight thyself also in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. So how can we delight in the Lord? We can read, we can spend more time with him, reading his word. We can spend more time praising him. We can delight ourselves in praising him. We can delight ourselves in all his wonderful works, thinking about all of his wonderful works that he has done. Thinking about what he has done, not only in Bible times, but in our lives, because we have been blessed. I know we're looking for the next blessing. I know that we're saying, Lord, I really want this so bad. But he has blessed us in the past. So we think about how he has blessed us. That's delighting ourselves in the Lord. If we think about, man, I can't wait to go to, go to church. I got a testimony that I want to I give. I got a song that I want to render unto the Lord. I want to encourage somebody. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. So delight yourself. You want to be blessed? Delight yourself. We have tried different ways, haven't we? We have tried studying hard. We have tried working hard. We have tried trying to make the right connections with the other people to say maybe it might be the connections. Maybe it might be the connections. They used to go around and have this slogan, is it the shoes? Is it the shoes? Is it the shoes? No, it's not the shoes. No, it's not how hard I work. No, it's not about who I know. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about delighting myself in him. That's what it's about. It's about delighting myself in him. So that's what we got to do. If we want success, delight yourself in him. Now, we act like that's something hard to do sometimes, don't we? We act like that's something really, really hard to do. But he didn't ask us to get up on that cross. He didn't ask us to be, to be up on that cross to where we had to shed our blood. See, the word of God said, we have not resisted on the blood. We haven't resisted. He didn't ask us to get up there and, and, and get nailed to that cross. But some of us acting like what he's asking us to do is that difficult. It's not. Come in and give him praise. You should have a praise anyway. Look at what he done for you. You still can see. You're still here. He's even giving you another opportunity to, to reach success. Because each day you have, you have another opportunity to go after success. You're still here. So think about that. 
So we, you should come in. You should have a praise. You should want to know his ways. You should want to. Because then you know how to please him. Then you know how to go after and get success. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Delight yourself in him. Find pleasure in him. Find pleasure talking with other saints, with other children of God, and hearing what he has done for them. And so it encourages your heart to go out there and do the same thing, to go out there and say, you know what? I'm going to stay steadfast with the Lord. He blessed them this way. I know he can bless me also. It's the same God. Right? We know it's the same God. One God, one faith, one baptism, right? So if he can bless them that way, he can bless me. He can bless me the same way. But I got to do similar things. They made him a priority. I can't make him second or third or fourth. They made him number one. And that's why they got blessed the way that they got. Let's turn to, to John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? Let's turn to John. Let's turn to John and John 15, chapter 15, verse 7 and 8. And it reads, if you abide in me, this is Jesus talking. If you abide in me, if you trust in me, if you follow me, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you. Here it's going to come full circle again. Where am I going to? A scripture on this. It's going full circle. Psalms 119 and 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you abide in me, if you stay focused in me, if you stay in me, if you don't leave me, if you don't get two-faced and see something else that you think that you might want at, that, at another time, right, something looks good, devil, don't let the devil, don't let the devil lure you away, don't let him put something in your face and it lures you away and, you're, and, you're, and you just see that, but if you stay in me, if you stay focused on me, if you abide in me and, let, and my word abide in you, if you keep my word, if you, if you keep my word, know my word, and let my word stay in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here, herein is my Father glorified. See, listen to that. It said herein. See, this is how God is glorified. It's glorified by you abiding in Jesus. In the, word, in, in the words of Jesus, abide in you. And, and you ask what you will. And get this. And, that, and, and then it be done unto you. Now that's how, that's how God's word is going to be glorified. Because people are going to see how you've been blessed. It says, herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. You understand me? That's how he's glorified. When people go out and they see how you've been blessed, you bear much fruit. You look happy. You don't look sad. Uh, you know, you got a smile on your face. People wondering, why, why is that person always happy? Because you're abiding in him. You're abiding in the Lord. His word, and you're, and you're allowing his word to abide in you. So you're looking happy while other people are looking sad. Right, you're looking like you're, you look healthy while other people aren't looking healthy. That's what it comes down to. Says, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. So think about it in that terms. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will. And it should be done unto you. Has anybody ever tried it? Have you anybody tried to abide? Listen. <laughs> Try it. It's right here. Quit abiding in all that other stuff. Quit abiding in all that other stuff. Stop it. This day. 
abide in Jesus and, al and allow his word to abide in you and then go to him. But get this. He said, my word abide in you. You're going to find out it's not about, Lord, please give me a million dollars. Some people say, well, I'm asking what I will. But see, if you go back and if you read, said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll find out that in his word, that's not necessarily his word. See, some people, they read that and they don't have to understand. But see, when you read it in its full, in its full content of the Bible, it says some people, when they ask, they ask amiss. They ask amiss. They're asking for things that it's not the will of God. And you're going to find out the certain things that people have asked for in the way and things that you're supposed to be doing that's within the will of God. Like I started out telling you that it's not about me, 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 me. It's about what can I do to be, to be a blessing to someone else? How can I bless somebody else? It's not about what you need a million dollars for. It. Oh, so you can have a nice house, so you can have a nice car, so you can look so important. Is that the will of God? So now you got a nice, you got a million dollars. So you're driving, you got a nice house. So people say, man, look at how, look at how, ooh, look at him. He's somebody. Look at that car he's driving in. He is really, really, really somebody. Is, it, is, that, is that what God's about, a self-exaltation? Self is, is it about him wanting you to be way up here? Isn't the word of God about being hu humility and humbleness? So you see how that's not, a lot of certain things people ask is not in the will of God. And they're wondering why they're not getting blessed. But you got to ask within his will. Some people say, well, that's not what the word. Yeah, it does say that. If you read his word, that if you abide in me and my word abide in, and my, and my words abide in you. If you read his word, you'll find out that it's not about it's not about you. It's not about you. And I know that's a shock to some of you because you think that, it, well, I should ask for the million dollars. I should ask for the big house. I should ask for that. No, you don't know. No, my friend, you don't need a, a, a house with 20, 20 bedrooms. You're not even married. You don't have any children. What do you need a house with 20 bedrooms? You got to ask within his will. Ask within his will. See, some of us is being blessed beyond measure and we don't even know it. Because we're looking for these, we're looking for, these, we're looking for God to bless us in a way that's not within his will. We're looking for that. But that's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. So let's turn to uh, 1 Kings chapter 3. Verses 9 through 13. And it reads, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Let me go ahead and give you a little bit of an intro into this. Solomon had a dream. God came to him in a dream. Came to him in a dream. King, excuse me, King Solomon came to, uh, God came to him in a dream. And he asked him, he said, what do, you know, in other words, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to give you? What do you want me to do for you? Okay. And as a result of that, this is what Solomon is, uh, is, is, is asking. He said, give, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. See how it's not about him? It's about the people. You see that? It's about the people. It's about the people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord. See, that's what we want to do, right? Don't we want to please the Lord? We don't want to ask for something that's not going to be pleasing to him. This pleased him. This pleased God. It pleased God. It pleased God. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, because thou had asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself 
long life, neither hath asked riches for thyself. Did you get that? Did you catch that? It said, neither hath I asked for riches for thyself. Did you catch that? Riches for thyself. You understand why I said sometimes you can ask the mist. See, people, man, give me a million dollars. Give me a mansion. Give me this. Give me that. But he said that thou didn't ask for riches for thyself. For thyself. See, we can get selfish sometimes. You know what I mean? We just want it to be about us, about us, about us, about us. But see, God is trying to get us from being that way. That's that natural man. The natural man wants to stand out. He wants to have all the most beautiful things. But that's the natural man. But see, God, when we come into God, he wants you to not, he wants you to leave from that sinful way, right? He, don't, he wants you to get more humble. He wants you to, he wants it to be, he wants you to be concerned about other people. So it says, for thyself, because he didn't ask for riches for himself. Nor has thy asked the life of thy enemies. You know what I mean? It's not about me. You know, they're, they're, they're working against me. God, I want you to take care of them. I want you to do them in. See, all that is about for himself. God said it's not about that. It's not about yourself. See, it's, again, it's about, it's about others. It's about when I bless you, how, you know, what am I blessing you for? What are you getting blessed for? How is it going to further help my kingdom? My kingdom. How is it going to help other people? What is it going to do? And that's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. So he says, so let's read on. But, but has asked, but see, listen, but has asked, this is what he says, but God, God said, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. See, that's something that's going to help people. That's something that's going to help God's people to have discern, ask for discerning judgment. Discerning judgment. And get this. To discern judgment. But think about it. Think about how well known King Solomon is. Think about how well known. He didn't say, Lord, make me the most popular. Maybe it's not. But just look, he had asked something how he could be a better servant to God's people. And look at how it blessed him. See, when you do the right things, when you make, when you're looking to be a blessing to others, God will bless you because you're looking to bless others. So one of the things that I want you to understand is don't make it about you. Ask for something that's going to be meaningful, that's going to make a difference in this world. It's going to make a difference in other people's lives. That's going to bring people more closer to God. Don't make it about, oh, you know, well, why didn't God bless me? And I know this message is for somebody. This message is for somebody. I know this message is for somebody. See, you know, no, it's not about all the big land. Big land for what? How's that going to bless me? Big house for what? What are you going to do with that? The, the, the new car for what? But when you make it, when you, when you choose and you ask God for something, and it's going to be about being a benefit to somebody, somewhere, somehow, it's about a benefit. Then he will bless you what you did one. It wasn't even in your heart. Right? I don't even know. I don't know if somewhere down the line if Solomon really wanted money or not. I don't know. If he wanted wealth or whatever. I don't know. Behold. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor. You see that. When you make your asking about others, Lord, help me to be a, help me to become 
a better pastor. Help me to become a better servant. Help me to help my church out. Help me to help the community out. Help me to be a guiding example. Help me, God. Bless me with a, with a business where I can employ people who are having trouble getting jobs that really want to work. Bless me, God, with this business. Not bless me with this business so I can really buy a bigger house or buy a better car. You understand? But when you really, truly make it about other people, you'll find out how he blesses you and how you're going to be blessed overflowingly. Some people say, you know what? I've never seen blessings overflowed before, right? Some people might say that. I never, like, you know, it says, bring thee all the tithes into the storehouse and I'll pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. That's overflowing blessings. The reason why? Maybe because you're not asking like Solomon is. It all comes together. Well, you can't do this part and leave this part undone. How are you asking? Are you asking things simply just for you? Or are you concerned about a lot of other people? What are you doing? So let's make it about other people. When we make it about other people, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. And I have given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. All thy days. Because he pleased God, because he didn't ask for himself. He asked him how to be a better servant. How to become a better judge of God's people. That's what he had asked. So you want success? Start asking for the right things. Start looking at how to judge what success really is. Start asking about how, start looking for the right success. Looking for the right success. Next we're going to turn to the book of Isaiah. Now this one's going to be one that we have read different times before, but you've never probably have thought about it like this, to this extent. We know what Isaiah 58 and 6 is about, right? That's about what we should be doing right now, fasting. We fast on Sundays here at Ultimate Health, Mind and Body, Recreative Ministries. That's what we do. But when we read on, it's just not about what you just not. It's not just about not putting things in your mouth. It's not just about refraining from refraining from putting food in your mouth. It is so much more than that. So much more. Isaiah 58 and 6 is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness. Again, there we go. There we go. Right. If you see wicked going on in the world. Some people are so fast to talk about the, the government, this, that, and the other. Well, fasting is to loose the bands of wickedness. Right? It's about loosing the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. You may see people who are, look like that they're pressed down. They are so heavy pressed. And to let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. Now let's read on. So that's what fasting's about, but let's read on. Is, not, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? So it's just not about not just eating. It's not about stopping eating during a certain time. But that bread that you're not eating, you're supposed to be giving, giving that bread out. Give, or giving, your bread to, giving bread to the hungry. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. See, think about this. Think about it's much more than just stop eating. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. It's about doing good when you're fasting. Not just about just stop eating. It's about going out there doing good. It's about serving when you're fasting. And that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. So now listen, after we deal our bread to the hungry, that we bring the poor into our house, that we cover the naked, now look at what happens. And that we hide not our and that we hide not ourselves from our, our own flesh. Right? 
Hide not thyself from thy own flesh. You're going to be afflicted. It's going to be some pain. Don't try to hide. Don't look for a refuge place. You understand me? Don't look for that. Now listen to this. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily. We have anybody in here that needs health issues. Anybody that needs health. Here it is. This is what it's about right here. This is success. This is truly success. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shall cry, and he shall say, here I am. Man, that's what we want the Lord. We want the Lord to be able to answer us when we call on him, right? Well, this is how we do it. It's not just about to stop eating. We're supposed to be doing good when we're eating. I want you all to think about when we fast. Think about it. It's not just stopping eating for a period of time. Oh, man, it's almost 3 o'clock. I get the chance to eat. Where did you give your bread to? What poor person did you consider and comfort? What, what person did you cover that neck? And, in other words, what good did you do during that fast? And he'll say, here I am. If thou take away, see, listen to this. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, talking about all the stuff that you want, all the stuff that brings you pleasure, all the stuff that brings you pleasure, thinking about, oh, man, I can't wait till I get out of here. I can't wait right now. We're, just, we're too long in church already. I can't wait to get out of here because I got things that I got to do. Thinking about your pleasure, your vanity, your vanity. See, you got to stop that if you want to be blessed by the Lord. See, some of you, that's why we can't truly be blessed because you're thinking too much on your own. You're thinking too much about you, too much about you. But the scriptures are right here. I'm bringing it to you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get at this. Jump off the page onto you. Jump off the screen onto you. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy thy, the afflicted soul, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall, see, listen, that's what we're supposed to do. Draw out our soul to the hungry and satisfy that afflicted soul. Now listen, when we do that, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. It's going to be a turnaround. The darkness as the noonday. It's going to be a turnaround. It's going to be a turnaround if you do it the right way. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. And satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. You understand me? You're going to be in a good place if you do it the right way. You got it. It's, you just, yes, yeah, stop eating during that time period when we, when we fast and make sure you're doing good in that time. Make sure that you're doing good. Help those. Help others. Be in a good place. Do good or not fast. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste, old waste place. Thou shalt rise up the foundation of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. So you're going to be something. You're going to be something. See, people want to be something sometimes, but if you do it God's way, you're going to be something. You're going to be something. The restorer of the path to dwell in. If thou turn away, listen to, listen, see, it can't be about you. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from the Sabbath, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasures on my holy day. You understand me? From doing thy pleasures on my holy day and calling this, and call the Sabbath a delight. The holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him. Not doing thy own ways. 
nor finding thy own pleasures, nor speaking thy own words. Then shall thy delight thyself in the Lord. See how we said, delight thyself also in the Lord? Then you shall be delight, you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This is success. So when you fast, stop eating. Be a help to others. Be a help to others. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Honor the Sabbath day. Don't, be, don't speak your own words. Don't go after your own pleasures. Don't go after your own pleasures. Don't go after your own words. But do what God has did. What he told you to do. And he said he'll have you ride upon the high places of the earth. He'll have you ride upon the high places of the earth. See, it can't be about you. Now listen, I know some of you will say, well, you know what? Well, wow. Well, what, look what Jesus did. They were talking to him about the things that he did on the Sabbath. I want to clear that up right now, okay? I want to clear that up. Because the Lord dealt with me whenever I was dealing, whenever I was talking about this. Right? So we're going to deal with that right now. And here it goes. When you're talking about Doing something on the Sabbath day. See, back in the day, they didn't believe you could do anything on the Sabbath day. Not one thing. But what Jesus was doing, Jesus said, is it better to do good or evil? See, the thing about it is, it's about doing, doing and living for the Lord. So if you're doing something that is good and that is going to be a help to fellow man, your fellow mankind, then it's the right thing to do. But when you're about there going after your own pleasures, doing your own stuff, that's when it's not the thing to do. You understand me? That's when it's not the thing to do. So I wanted to clear that up. Well, you know, what was Jesus? What was Jesus doing? Was he doing his own pleasures? He was healing people. He was healing people. So that's the difference. Yes, we could do things on the Sabbath, but it got to be about the Lord. People say, well, look at the Lord. They were talking about what Jesus was doing on the Sabbath. What was he doing on the Sabbath? What was he doing? He was doing righteousness on, on the Sabbath. That's what he was doing. Don't make it about your own pleasures and about the things that you want. All right, all right. Thank the Lord. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 27. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who calleth his own servants and delivereth them unto their and deliver unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents to another two. And to another one, to every man according to his, uh, every, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then that, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And, and, so, he, and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou didst, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee. Let's just stop here. <laughs> People always come up with excuses. They come up with excuses. You come up with excuses for not doing the right thing. And he's going to come up with an excuse. But it's not going to be good enough. Then he that received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast thy, there, there thou hast thy, lo, there thou hast that is thine. Well, why do you think that his master gave him that? He gave him something to use, to do something with. Not to hide it somewhere, not to give him an excuse, not to say, I knew that, I knew that you were this hard man. See, we come up with a lot of excuses, and that's why we don't get it done. We try to justify a lot of things that we do, but it's not the right way. We know the word of God, and if you don't know the word of God, you need to ask about the word of God. Then you ask, but when you do things and you know it's not the right way and you don't get blessed and then you look pitiful and you look pathetic and then those around you feel bad and they want to jump in, just do it the right way. You know how to serve the Lord. We know when we're doing things that's wrong. We know that. We know when we're doing wrong. So don't do wrong. then you don't have to get judgment. So he came and he told his Lord this, this story about how he knew he was this hard man, where he reaped where he didn't sow and all this stuff. But let's look what his, let's look what his Lord said. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. Then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. You know what I was about, and you didn't do it. You know that I, okay, you say all these things about me and you didn't go ahead and do what you were supposed to do. There's not going to be any excuse. The Lord is not going to hear any excuse. Let's turn to Luke chapter 16, verse 10 through 12. He that is, a, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Do you hear that? He that is faithful, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. So, for example, why is he going to give you? Why is he going to give you more if you can't be faithful over what he already has given you? Why can't why is he going to do that? And he that is unjust in least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? You got to learn how to, how, to be, how, to, how to be a good steward. Both of them passages of scripture is talking about you got to learn how to be a good steward over what is given to you. You got to learn how to be a good steward over what's given to you. You can't just go and just and, and be uh, unres and not, not be responsible. You got to be responsible about what's being placed in your hand. You got to be responsible with things. And you and so you can get more. You can be elevated more. 
How are you going to get elevated on the job if you're not doing the job that you got right? Who's going to bless that? You got to be a good steward over what's been placed in your hand. Be a good steward over it. So how's God going to bless you when you're not being good over what he's already given you? He gave you a house. Take care of this house. Fix that house up. Put some paint on that house. Fix the floors in that house. Wipe the walls off of that and, and that house. He's given you a house. Why are you going to give you something better? You haven't taken care of this one yet. You haven't taken care of this one yet. Now, it's going to get down to the last part of the sermon I want to talk to you about. Sowing seed. Sowing seed. So we're going to turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 38. So somebody who's wanting, the wanting to be blessed with money and finances, are you cheap with your finances? Or are you cheap with yours? He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with same measure that ye meet, for with the same measure that ye meet, withal is shall be measured to you again. So, so when you go ahead and you do the right things, and you serve the Lord in the right way, and you give, you give, he'll give to you. He'll give to you. You give, he gives to you. That's the way it works. You give, he gives to you. That's the way that it works. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So what are you sowing? If you want to be blessed, are you sowing blessing seeds? Are you bless helping somebody else to be blessed? Are you helping somebody else to be blessed? Are you helping someone else? You want to be blessed, or are you helping someone else to be blessed? You got to ask yourself that. You want money or are you, are you giving money? You want to be in a good relationship? Or are you, are, are, you a, are, are you a good friend when you're in a relationship? What about the relationships are you in? Are you in a, are, do, you, do you do good in no relationships? Are you sowing good seed? You want, you want, to, have a good, you want to have a friend? Or are you being a, fr a good friend? Are you being a good friend? What seeds are you sowing? Because he's not going to be able to give it to you any other way. He said, God, be, he said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. He's not going to be made fun of. You're, he's not going to be made fun of. He's not going to be, he's not going, people's not going to say, well, look, huh, I didn't do this. Look, God don't bless me this way. He's not going, that's not going to happen. What you, what you sow is what you're going to reap. What you sow is what you're going to reap. If you're sowing good seed, you're going, to get, you're going to get a good harvest. First Peter, chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no gal. Read that again. For he that will love life, people that love life, meaning good things are happening in life, isn't it? Right? Good things that are happening. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no gal. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears Listen to this. And his ears are open unto their prayers. 
But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you? And, he, and who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? So if we're thinking about being successful. If we want to be successful, we got to, we got to, we got to give ourselves wholeheartedly to the Lord. We got to give ourselves to the Lord. We got to make it about other people, not about ourselves. Don't ask things just for yourself. Because when you ask for other people, he's going to bless you. So we got to think about it like that. You know, we got to think about it. The way we got to do it this way. When we do it this way, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed. Bless, bless, bless. We're going to be blessed. When we do it this way, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed. So if you want to be blessed, you're going to do it this way. So this is a, this is a good message. This is a happy message. I should see smiles and happiness coming out from you. This is a good message. He's saying success is here. It didn't say that you can't be successful. Success is here. But you have, to be, you have to do it this way. It's here. You just got to do it this way. It is here. So if you want success, do it this way. Put the Lord first. Be concerned about other people. Do for other people. Sow good seeds. You're going to be blessed. We're going to have the altar call. We'll have the altar call at this time. 